So I'll try to clarify um, what's the semantic player about and why, in my perspective, it's an important uh, innovation for uh, software in general and for people in large. Um, back in the days when we started watching television, if you want, uh, and when we started recording things on the television, we had uh, what we called VCR and we were using cassettes uh, which were essentially physical medium that you were inserting into a box in order to uh, play video uh, on your television. Uh, later, it evolved into uh, you know, becoming uh, CDs and then Blu-rays, but essentially it was always the same paradigm, which, we, which, we, which is um, you, you, you get a physical, uh, physical uh, device, medium if you want, and you put it in a box and then you have your movie or whatever you're trying to watch. Then we transitioned to computer and we built what we called um, video players. And we actually built a bunch of them and uh, their uh, functionality were very limited back in the days before we got to modern video player like the ones we're developing today. And I'm actually part of the VLC4 team and we're working to my, in my, in my opinion, to the most, uh, we're working on the most advanced uh, media player and video player out there. Um, to this date. It's both extremely comprehensive in terms of compatibility and in what it can do and what it can play. But it's still a video player. And what a video player is in terms of software, it's essentially instead of pushing a physical device inside a box, inside a physical box, if you want, uh, you, uh, you open and you stream a file, uh, whether it's an audio or video file, MP3, MP4, OGG, whatever you might have, and whether it's local or remote, whether it's on your computer or some other computer out there, uh, you're essentially uh, accessing and, and playing a file. So that's the paradigm we're on right now. And we have a variance of this paradigm when you're uh, accessing something, for instance, on a service, on a video service like uh, YouTube or uh, Netflix, you're essentially playing a resource through a web service on their proprietary uh, player. It's often JavaScript, for instance. There might be a DRM here and there, but it's still, it's still a very simple uh, video player that essentially accesses a resource when you're allowed to, uh, to access such resource. So that's the paradigm we're on, the paradigm we're on. Now, when you look at the software as a tool, you know, that empower people, uh, YouTube is not a tool, it's a service. Netflix is not a tool, it's a service. So keep in mind that what I'm talking about is uh, our tools, uh, essentially software dedicated to its user, that empower user. And so when it comes to that vision, I think uh, we're going to transition to something new that takes the internet into account. Uh, what happens with the internet is uh, all of a sudden, it's not just that you have a scarce uh, local, uh, local drive to browse from, you know. All of a sudden you have a bunch of drive all around the world that could be potentially accessed and from, from where you could stream content. So all of a sudden you have all these places that you could find uh, these videos to stream. So it's the, the, the issue there, there is no longer um, about um, uh, being able to play a, a given file, but there's another issue which is to say how can I access uh, those video resources based on what I'm looking for, based on the idea I have in my mind? It's like you start with an idea and then from this idea, you want videos, just like what, just, just like what you would do on Google. You have an idea, you want results, web page results. Well, that's the same here. You have an idea and you want to, and you, and you want to access to these public video resources from the idea you might have or from the URL you might have in mind. And so a semantic video player is essentially that. Instead of having a physical or a virtual device you're reading from, whether it's a cassette, a, a CD, or a video file, you start from an idea. You have an idea, you type it, and then uh, through the semantic player, you're going to get results that will essentially connect you to the appropriate resource but what matters is no longer the resource in itself. What matters is what's the idea you're trying to access and what are you tr trying to play on the, on, the, on, on, the, on the computer you're on. And so a semantic player is this. You type an idea, you start with the logos if you want. You type an idea and you get a bunch of results from various backends 
on different technologies. It could be web server, but it could also be BitTorrent, for instance, which is a distributed system. It could be an IPFS, which is another protocol, whatever you have. But it's an idea of accessing public resources out there from a semantic query, from text. And I believe that's going to be the primary way uh, we're going to watch videos in the coming years. We're going to have a tool that essentially let us access to all of this and let us play those resources directly from a text query.